What's up, losers? I am Luke, and this is Luke Loses. Now, here at Luke Loses, being a loser, that's a positive thing. We are losing the weight, we are losing the unhealthy lifestyle, and we're losing that negative image we have for ourselves. Please remember that I don't have any fitness or nutrition education. Everything I talk about here is from searching the internet, asking questions, and my own personal experiences. Check out my website. It is lukeloses.card.co. That has all my social media platforms, as well as other places you can find this podcast. I also have a call line now, so it is 323 323- 920-LUKE. That is 323-920-5853. Real quick, I want to bring up something. I have a buddy of mine. Him and I have a little bet going to be going on. A case of protein and I believe a bag of chicken we were talking about. So it's a 25-pound weight loss challenge. And since it's recommended to lose two pounds a week, We're giving ourselves three months to do it. Whoever reaches it first wins. We would like to extend the challenge to my listeners as well. Uh, We probably won't give you a bag of chicken or the protein, but you would have bragging rights and you can officially be the first Luke's loser. How's that sound? (laughs) All right. So on today's episode, I am interviewing my best friend, Mark Lapham. He is currently overseas with his job. He is in the Army. But when he's around, him and I are pretty inseparable. We've got some pretty inappropriate and pretty embarrassing stories, but we won't get into that today. With his job in the Army, he's got some awesome training, and I feel it could be super beneficial to my listeners and other people that are going through their own weight loss journey. We are just going to jump right into it. And let's get started. All right. So today I am with a good friend of mine, Mark Lapham. Him and I have been friends for quite some time. I uh, I don't even remember how long, but I know he's one of my oldest friends. Mark, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Mark. Uh, Like Luke said, I'm one of his closest friends. He's one of my closest friends. I've been, since the beginning of this podcast, I've been just almost magnetized to it. Um, Listening to some of the things that you talk about, I've heard you tell me a thousand times, right? We've had that conversation many times, but for you to go and just be public about it has really just made me be more realistic with myself and try to strive to be better myself. And the fact that you can go from where I knew you from and where we started from and just be able to just turn around and motivate me. Cause I remember when I was joining the army, when I would try to get you out of the house, I was trying to get you exercising and I was trying to get you out. And then eight years later, I've been in the army for eight years now, Luke. Um, eight years later, I tune into the podcast, man. And like, you really made me think about what I'm doing with my life and how I could be doing so much more. And for one, I just want to thank you for having me. And I want to thank you for all of the amazing, you know, words and inspiration that you've given me through your podcast. I really appreciate that, man. I, uh, yeah, I definitely remember when, when you came home and told me that you joined the army and next thing I know you were trying to get me healthy and I'm like, Oh, I don't really like this guy. (laughs) What made you decide that you wanted to come on my show? Well, kind of what I was just talking about, um, just the inspiration that you showed me. And then also um, I've been training soldiers in the army with a program called master resiliency training. And it's something that we've talked about offline a few times. Um, But it's just something that I think that understanding the program and the skills that it offers really helps me on a daily basis. And I think that I can, I can hear through some of your trials and tribulations that you've had through your experience and adventures that uh, I think these things could help you out too. And if it can help you, then hopefully it can help some of your listeners as well. We, like you said, we've talked about it plenty of times and it's, it's insane how 
there's so many connections to whatever I'm going through with what your training is and what you can help me with. So I'm, I'm glad we got you on here. And I, I feel like we can break through and help other people as well. Yeah. Well, that's a goal. I, I hope we can get there. So how did you start with the resilience training? So in the army, um, for anybody that's never really, you know, been around military or, uh, been involved with, you know, obviously the army and and specifically, um, there's three big schools in the army that you want to get, you want to go to, and you want to be proficient in to be able to progress your career faster and to be just a more well-rounded leader. Um, and those are sexual assault and sexual harassment. That's one class, um, equal opportunity. That's another class. And then the third one is MRT, uh, Master Resiliency Training. And so the first two are offered when I've back when I took the course or when I was offered the course, uh, the other two were offered for staff sergeants and above. So I was one step below that at the time. So when I went to Master Resiliency Training, it was like the first class I could go to. And when I went there, I didn't expect for it to be presented in the way that it was. But when I received the training for the first time from actual certified civilians that were college graduates certified to provide the training to trainers, it really made me open my eyes to all of the possibilities of the human brain. And so with that, I really kind of bought into it and I've been trying to just get some, you know, get some traction behind myself and my classes so I can get in front of soldiers and really show them the right way of learning the process. Awesome. So I'm going to go back a little bit. What is your job in the army? What do you do? So I am a Patriot maintainer slash operator. Um, I work for, I work in the air defense sector of the army. Um, and basically I sit in an air conditioned box and play imaginary games of alien invaders. That's the, that's the best way that I can explain that. All right. So back on the resilience training, what exactly is that? So master resiliency overall is just trying to create a, the mental capacity of being the, the example they use a lot is being more of a rubber ball instead of an egg. So when you're faced with adversity, you're faced with failure, you're faced with big things that happen in your life, you can bounce back easily and get back into the fight. Um, and the program itself is designed to provide aid for athletes, um, not necessarily soldiers. It was designed for athletes. They transitioned it to a army program um, to where it's more driven towards soldiers. Like all of my courseware has pictures of soldiers and stuff. The origin of it is for athletes themselves to be able to perform under pressure and that bounce back from adversity quickly so that they can get back into the game and keep going and reaching those goals that they have, um, obviously every day for, for their achievements. There's 14 skills. Um, and if, Going through the program, you learn one at a time, and you don't really get the full experience of MRT as the full program until you know all of them and then learn how to practice each of them. And then over time with practice comes proficiency, and with proficiency comes resilience. All right. So how has this training affected your life? So the big things that the training did for me And it started the minute I was sitting in the class with some of the projects that they put you through, make you list out certain things. Like one in particular was to write down four individuals in your life that are extremely important to you. And at the time I I put down my daughter, my wife, my dad, and I actually put you down. Um, You were my fourth person. And this specific skill was trying to get you to be realistic about how much time and effort you put into other people. And it was trying to weigh how many times in a conversation you can genuinely say that you were interested in what was happening and that you were providing feedback that would amplify their joy in the situation. 
And for my daughter, it was simple and it was, you know, it was eye opening, but it was, it was okay because she's a child. And I, you know, as a child, she comes up to me with, you know, a a snowman she just made out of cotton balls. And I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. And I amplify her joy. And that's just what I do. But when it comes to, you know, talking to you over the phone or talking to my dad over the phone for one back then, I, I was very disinterested with whatever was happening. If I was interested in what was happening, I would always like kind of jump in and try to question what was happening. So instead of you telling me that you met a new girl and you're, you're thinking about proposing to her, I'd be like, well, I mean, we've been here before Luke, you know, is this really the one you want to be with instead of like, dude, that's awesome. I hope, you know, I hope you guys make it super far and I'm super excited for you. Like just how you interact with people and how that affects them. And then in, you know, when they reciprocate that feeling, you know, people just hype each other up and building people up is part of the whole program overall as well. So that specific exercise was extremely eye opening because they made you break it up into a percentage of the time that you pulled people up and the time that you push people down. And 70% of the time I was pushing people down and it wasn't out of like spite. It wasn't because I didn't want them to come up. It was because I was just in that moment, just like trying to help them. But by helping them, I was pushing them down. Right. So that was kind of like your automatic setting. Like you weren't intending to, to do it, but it was just. Yeah. And I was looking out for the best interest, but I didn't know how to do it properly. Right. Um, but that was, that was the part of the course that when I went through that, it was pretty emotional. I remember sitting in class and like holding back tears from like, man, what am I doing to people? <laughs> but um, that was the part of the course that I was like, you know what? I need to buy into this. Like I'm, I'm buying into this program and I am going to do my best to help other people understand it better so that they can get something out of it as well and improve their life overall. So uh, goal setting is a part of this, correct? Yes. And as a matter of fact, goal setting is the first skill that you learn in MRT. It's set up in a, in a series. Um, and with that series, it starts with uh, goal setting and then it goes into the rest of the 14. I won't get too far into that because we could be talking for hours on how many of these are. And then I'd have to explain each one. But goal setting, yes, it's the first one. And it's probably one of the one of the hardest ones to understand without um lots of practice, but we had talked about it. And I think goal setting is something that a lot of people do improperly, but when you just simply think about what the steps should be for goal setting and break it down, it really sets you up for success to be able to set a goal, either obtain the goal or be able to shoot and, you know, check your azimuth on your, on your way to your goal and be like, I'm not heading to the direction I want to be, but I'm okay with this direction. Let me go ahead and reevaluate this goal and change it. And being able to do that on the fly is really what gets you to places different from where you are now. So, so that's really interesting. And you're right. I, I believe all this stuff can be used for what I'm doing with my weight and you know, my mental aspect really. So how are these skills utilized within the army? As anybody would guess, you face a lot of adversity while in the army, whether it be long deployments away from family members and then having things happen while you're away, or even if you're stateside and just having plans crushed because mission comes first. The design behind the program is to be able to, like I said before, have have these soldiers trained mentally to be able to regulate their emotions and control the outcome of a situation inside before any other actions have to be taken. It helps us be able to perform at a higher level, and it also helps us be able to maintain our military bearing and face difficult situations while still being respectful and keeping our cool in really crazy situations. All right. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So how can these be applied to the situation of losing weight? So many of the skills translate really well to any aspect of your life. Goal setting specifically, which is why it's also the skill that I chose to kind of bring onto the show today, 
can be applied to any type of goal that you have. Typically, they're designed more for a long-term goal. But for weight loss, I think the biggest problem with weight loss is somebody, as they set the goal of weight loss and then they try to reach that goal, they get to a certain point and they're not happy with it. And then they either give up or they try to be unrealistic and find change that's not going to happen. Goal setting will give you seven steps that at any point along the way, you can just kind of reevaluate yourself. And it's not like these steps are set in stone. It's very fluid. And with the fluidity of the step process, I think that weight loss fits into the goal setting model extremely well. And it will provide some oversight for people to do on their own without any other people interjecting. So I know you and I've talked about it before, and I believe you said there's a picture of like the seven steps. Yes, I have a picture of the seven steps and I can send you that. Um, you can make it the thumbnail. Awesome. I'll, I'll definitely do that. I'll post that up on my page. Awesome. It might appear that I just want to hijack your podcast and just take it over. Um, but if you don't mind, I'm just going to do that for a brief moment. Okay. So when I say goal setting to you, give me in your own words, what you think the process of setting a goal looks like. So when, when I do it, I like, I'll, 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 I would give some examples, I guess. So one of my goals is to lose 170 pounds. Um, and that's a given. And then like what comes along with it for me, where will I be happy? what can make me the happiest? And I'd like to be in an extra large shirt. I would like to run a 5k and yeah. So that, that's how I set my goals is just what would make me happy, I guess. All right, cool. I mean, exactly like you said, right? So if you want to set a goal first, you got to figure out what that goal is going to be. So for you, it's you know fitting into an extra large shirt or running a 5k. So, it actually fits directly into my model here. Um, step one is to define your goal. There's a little more specifics to it than that. And I would like to take you through the steps real quick. First step is to define your goal. So if you want to go ahead and put down, Luke, that you want to fit into an extra large shirt. The second step is that you have to know where you are right now. So 4X is what I'm currently at. All right. So you're at a 4X, you want to be in a 1X, right? Third step is to decide what you need to develop. So for that, I'll break it down in a minute, but that's just the third step. Decide what you need to develop. So for your instance, it's going to be, you know, you need to be able to develop some sort of a fitness program. You need to develop some sort of a nutrition program. You need to develop some sort of a backup program for when those things fall through or you kind of jump back off of the wagon and you start doing what you've done in the past. Step four is to make a plan for steady improvement. So that's just saying that, that plan is kind of what's going to get you to your, to your, to your goal. So like I would follow, follow my plan. Right. Exactly. Okay. So you're just making a plan. Step five is to pursue regular action. What that means is that with your plan, you're just going to go on with your life, right? With your plan in hand, following your plan. But it, because the plan is supposed to be steady improvement, you're not making any knee jerk reactions. You're not, you know, going and subscribing to 17 different gyms that you'll never go to in this instance. It's just pursuing regular action. So you're not going to do anything out of the ordinary unless, you know, walking is out of the ordinary. You might have to do that. Step six is to commit yourself completely. By that, I mean, you need to step out of your comfort zone and this needs to happen internally. You need to step out of your comfort zone and commit yourself to the goal. By that, I'm talking about maintaining the motivation that you have at this time and making sure that you can reach the seventh step. So the seventh step is to continually monitor your progress. So the way that all of these steps are set up is it starts with the first step, define your goal, and then it's got a road. And the road turns as it goes through all of the steps in a big circle and it meets back after it leaves the seventh step, there's an arrow and it points back to the first step. So it's a repeating process. And this just keeps moving around in a circle. And every time you, you get to step seven and you, you're continually monitoring your progress, you then have to define your goal again. If it's the same goal and you're, you're, you you want to stay on the same path, 
then you get to go back and refine that goal and you get to keep moving forward. And with that, your make a plan for steady improvement, step four, and your pursue regular action, those are slowly going to change and be converted into bigger steps and bigger regular actions and making more moves towards your goal. But it's nothing that needs to be done immediately. So next to each goal, if you have it in like a list format or if you wrote it out on a piece of paper, maybe put it like above or below if you have space on the paper. For step one, step one is your end state. That's where you want to be, right? Like you said, I want to be in an Excel shirt. Yep. Step two, know where you are right now. That's the energizing phase. That's where you're going to find all sorts of internal motivations and external motivations and be able to get your brain moving towards your goal. But again, this is just internal. This is not getting up. You don't even have to leave the couch yet. You're still on step two. Okay. Step three is uh, setting your priorities. So it was decide what you need to develop. Uh, the kind of keyword for that or key phrase is priorities. So getting your priorities straight making sure that you have everything in order before you make out onto this journey of, of reaching this goal. And this was, I thought this was the crazy thing. Um, the craziest when I had gotten onto Adam Bartasis's Facebook, he was live streaming and he was talking about smart steps. So step four, make a plan for steady improvement. We're going to go over the smart steps just like he did. All right. And I'd like to stop you there and just, just highlight the fact that right now on step four with all of these different ways to explain it, this is all the planning phase all the way up until uh, step four. You haven't come, you haven't done anything yet. You haven't actually gone out and subscribed to a gym. You haven't ordered some crazy amount of meal plans off offline. You haven't done anything crazy. You are just making a plan for step one through four. Step five is going to be your first acting. And like I said, pursue regular action. Another way to think about that is setting yourself up with just little wins. I know you've talked about it on your show before, just things that you've done that you're proud of yourself about. You get done with a week and you didn't go over your calorie limit for a week. That's a win, man. Reward yourself mentally. Just tell yourself how good of a job you're doing. Share your plan with somebody else have them help you win. And by winning, I just mean internally. Be happy about where you are. Step six, commit yourself completely. Again, like I said before, it's maintaining that motivation that you set forth in the energized step back in step two. Then finally, in progress review, that's step seven, key word there. So if everybody's following along, you have the step process, the seven steps, there's also a photo on Luke's Instagram and Facebook that'll list this out as well. Um, it might not give nearly as beautiful detail as I have, but that's a seven step process. Goals overall enhance performance. Goal setting can produce motivation, direct attention, increase effort and persistence, and it can also promote new strategies. And that kind of goes back to that recycling phase of the goal setting. As soon as you get to the top, you start it over and you're going to you know, you're going to promote new strategies, find new ways to do things, know what doesn't work so that you can make it work next time by doing it differently. Motivation does matter, though, through all of this. You're more likely to achieve goals when the motivation comes from within you and is tied to your personal values. Understanding your personal values is a huge part of MRT overall. But for me, my personal values is family, friends, and my outlook on life in general is, is positive. I'm a very positive person and I carry myself positively. And that really kind of, it carries me along with most of the goals that I set. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm a little positive to a fault because I think that I can do things that I can't because I feel like I'm a better person than I am when it comes to sticking to my goals. But, you know, it just takes one box of snacks delivered from a family back home and I'm right off my goal. And then also something to really think about is self-regulation. Self-regulation is a primary target of goal setting. So just being able to, and it's not just self-regulating yourself to not go out and have that snack. It's just about gen generally self-regulating is the 
like for goal setting, that's what goal setting is doing is it's regulating yourself, setting a goal, sticking to it, achieving it. You're regulating what you're committing to. So with this, it's in my mind right now, what I'm thinking is that this goal setting is so simple, but it's much more complex. Does that make sense? Yes. And it, the complexity of the goal or the goal setting process really depends. I had a mentor for a long time that used to tell me this saying all the time. He said, we're all here together, but you get to decide on how much you commit yourself to project mayhem. And I never really understood it until I got to a certain point in my career when I realized that I was doing things differently than others and I was working harder than others, but we're all getting paid the same and we're all getting promoted the same. But what I'm doing from my aspect and my, you know, where I work at is I am fostering an environment to bring up more people to be more positive around me and we're building each other up. So your goals that you set, the more that you take on your one through four, your plan, and the more complex you make it, the better overall goal results you're going to have from the process overall, if that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So quickly we'll go ahead and uh, kind of, we're going to break into each of these steps real quick. I'm going to try not to take too much of your guys' time, but so the process begins with a dream or a performance goal that you generally want to achieve. I, you have to identify your outcome goal and identify a suspense for your goal. So these are the important things, right? So I know, like you said, you didn't really have a suspense for yours and that's okay. You know, it's something that can, you know, come later on. If you want to follow the seven step pro process, you can kind of get there and see where, where you lie. And if you feel comfortable with it and you want to throw a suspense on it at some point, it, all it does is make it a little better. You know what I mean? Right. And like I said, in the beginning, the, the, step process itself is very fluid. So if you find yourself not achieving that goal in that time frame, all you got to do is just readjust and set that goal a little further out. As long as you're always trying to achieve that and being realistic, you'll get there eventually. Yeah. That's one thing that I, I talked to my wife about is the, the little, I'm going to say failures along the way, as long as I'm in the right direction, I'm, I'm okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I was gaining like one pound a week and it was bothering me, but I kept thinking I'm heading in the right direction. As long as I'm moving forward and not taking this back road or going backwards, I'm good. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I 100% agree. So a big thing about defining your goal is that you have to leverage your internal motivation. So you're more likely to achieve your goals when you are internally motivated. Identify the values that have the greatest influence on your daily behavior. And then in a blank part of your paper that you have in front of you, in one or two sentences, explain how each value will help you achieve your goal. So some of the values that I've seen a lot of people write down or a lot of people talk about is like they value, like they have a great value in gratitude or perseverance, personal courage, teamwork. Like those are all things that they value close to themselves. It's part of their character. And those are the things that kind of build them up and motivate them. Like we said, step two is know where you are right now. To figure out how you're going to get to your goal, you have to understand where you're starting from. And it sounds really basic, but some people just, you know, when I first set out to go and start a college program, or go try to achieve a college degree. My first thing was I want to go and I want to get a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. And I set that as a goal for myself. And I went to a school and I started talking to a counselor and I did the paperwork. And then they came back and they were like, these are the classes that you have to do before I can even enroll you in that degree program. And there were discrepancies because some of those classes I can't even pronounce. And I was upset by that. And it really set me back because in, what happened was I, I had a goal, but it was unrealistic. And I didn't ever stop to think about where I was starting from. I'm starting as a high school graduate. I haven't been to school in quite some time. So to be able to try to set that as a, as a goal, something that a lot of people have struggled with right out of high school and going directly into college, 
It was unrealistic and that set me up for failure from the beginning. Something else for knowing where you are right now is to imagine the benefits of successfully reaching your goal. This is kind of goes into that energizing part of that, right? So imagine the benefits of successfully reaching your goal. So you mentioned that you would want to fit into an extra large t-shirt or you said also running a 5k. So that's great. You defined your goal. You said that's what you wanted to do. So in the second step here, you want to make sure that you imagine the benefits. So it's not just thinking about what the benefits could be. We're talking about closing your eyes, taking a moment, putting on some woosah music, and really sitting back and imagining yourself successfully reaching your goal. Imagine yourself finishing, walking across or running across that, that finish line on a 5K. Just picture the amount of anxiety that would be lifted off your shoulders because you've done it. Imagine the crowd around you, the road under your feet, the breeze, the smell of yourself all musky because you just got done with an amazing run, the feeling running through your body and the blood flowing through because it's just rushing so fast because you've just put so much effort into this 5k and you've completed it and the joy that you're overcome with when you get to do it and then you get to go hug your wife and tell her that you did it. Just the feeling itself, really sitting there and imagining yourself in a situation instead of just saying, that'd be pretty cool. It really sets that motivation forward and it makes you want to go out and reach that goal even more. And again, don't go out running yet. We're still in the planning phase. Lastly, brainstorm the obstacles that might stand in your way. So part of motivation and imagining your benefits of success to reaching your goal we also have to be realistic. What obstacles or personal behaviors might hinder your progress? Write these down, right? So like if, you're, if your goal is to go out and do like a triathlon, but you don't know how to swim, that's an obstacle. We got to get there first before we can get you to the triathlon. So understand the obstacles that could come, right? So Right off the, you know, right off Jump Street, what do you think some of the obstacles for reaching your goal would be, Luke? You know, I've ran, I've jogged and whatnot, but I remember you came up, I think maybe two years ago, and we tried running, and I, I think we ran a mile. I stopped like four times, and I feel like that was the best I've ever done. It took a long time to get there, but yeah. I remember that, but to have some sort of a backup plan for if an obstacle gets in the way is extremely important because you don't want obstacles to be able to set you back too long, throwing you off your path of reaching your goal. We're on to step three now. You need to focus your efforts in the areas that will move you towards your goal. So this is, you know, deciding what you need to develop. So based on the obstacles that you identified in step two, identify the broad priority areas you have to address to reach your goal. So in your instance, you haven't ran very much, right? So I would fall that under like a broad spectrum of other things that could fit under the same thing, physical fitness, right? Yep. So if you have that under physical fitness, some of the other things that you might have to consider would be like, you know, your attitude overall, like right now you want to go run a 5k, but what happens when you go run a 3k and you're like, yeah, that hurts. Don't want to do that. You know, kind of fill it, fit, fitting in another, um, category under attitude, keep your attitude in check, fitting another category under nutrition um, to make sure that your body's going to have the fuel to do what you have to do and know how to get it there. Um, and then also something that you should always consider. And I, I tell everybody that I teach this course to that you should always consider putting this broad spectrum of a category of obstacles is balanced. Because no matter what your goal is, you want to make sure that it's not taking away from the happiness that you already have in your life. So you need to make sure you find a balance to be able to commit yourself to your goal, but not so much that you're taking away from other things. You know, you don't want to miss out on your, your, your son's birthday because you were out running or training for a 5k, things like that. It seems like common sense, but just to have that plan there set in action, it's already taken care of. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that I do. You and I've talked about it. I have a very addictive personality. So when I sink my mind into doing something or if there's something that I'm enjoying doing right now, I give it my all. And I do that. I I put a lot of stuff on the back burner and just focus on that one thing. Exactly. So we want to try to avoid that as much as we can and building a good balance to what you're doing is going to allow you to 
commit yourself to the goal, but in a long-term effect so that you're not throwing your, so everything you have at the goal. And then what happens when that goal falls through or that you have to readjust, you've just thrown so much time into it. So now you have, so, you know, so many things that have fallen apart when you fall apart from that goal. So if you reach a balance between you and the rest of your life, make sure that you're still doing the things that make you happy in your life. You're just making sure you, that you build a balance that you can kind of fit yourself in or fit your goal into your everyday life. No, it's, it's understandable. Like to, uh, to look at it like that. We're going to jump into step four, make a plan for steady improvement. Okay. For step four, we're just talking about action statements. Action statements tell you what work you need to do to achieve your goal. So these are things that you're going to kind of make up and it's going to seem really silly if you've never done this type of thing before, but trust me, it does work. You can do it with, especially if you have like a teammate or a, you know, a wife or a, a spouse, a, brother or sister that you want to compete with or do things with making these action statements together is really fun. I've done it myself. It's a great time, but for each priority area. So going back to what we just did in step three, we fall under nutrition. You need to make um, action statements for that broad spectrum of nutrition. So I drink at least 80 ounces of water a day. So what is that? That is an action statement. I drink at least 80 ounces of water a day. That's descriptive. It tells you that you're going to do something and it's overall, you know, it covers overall what you need to do for that day. Another action statement for that would be, I eat 60% clean carbs, 30% healthy fat, and 10% lean protein every day. Now this is getting a little specific. You don't have to go that specific, but making these action statements are really important. This falls into what Adam was talking about. He was talking about smart steps, right? Or the smart, the statements that are smart. So for each priority area, create several action statements that are smart. So that means it's an acronym. So S stands for specific. M stands for measurable. A stands for action focused. R is realistic. And T is time bound. So just like I was explaining before, I drink at least 80 ounces of water a day. It fits all of that specific, measurable, action focused, realistic, and time bound. Making those action statements fit to that smart profile is really going to help you come out and succeed overall. Another part of step four is going to be power statements. So you got your action statements that have you talking about what you're going to do. You got your power statements that provide the confidence and energy to complete your action statements. So these ones are the fun ones. The last ones. They can be fun, but these ones are actually fun. For each priority area, again, create a power statements that are P3. P3 stands for purposeful, productive, and possibility. So for each action statement, you're making one of these. I expect great things out of my body, so I put only great things in. It's a really long power statement. I don't recommend using them that long. I like to use little smaller ones. Like when I go out and I work out and then I go eat afterward, I love to look at whoever's next to me and just kind of give them a little smirk and like, you got to fuel the machine. You know what I mean? And I start shoveling food into my mouth. All right. Moving on to step five here, we're going to be pursuing the regular action like you already have written down. So here it's really about identifying an action statement to complete tomorrow. So like I said before, we're not jumping in. You're not going to go jump into a pool and try to learn how to swim on your own. For one, it's dangerous. I don't recommend it. For two, you want to do something small that puts you onto the path without making you scared of what's to come. So like I said before, your action statement of drink at least 80 ounces of water, it's too easy. You get an 80 ounce bottle or an 80 ounce container and you fill it up and you drink it throughout the day, right? It's not that much and it's going to kind of provide that for you. So grab a large container, fill it with water, you drink it throughout the day, and at the end of the day, when you're done, you reward yourself with a pat on the back. Next, identify a power statement to use tomorrow to motivate you to complete the action statement, right? Drinking water, it's super important. You need to hydrate, otherwise you're going to die. So hydrate or die, right? Right. Say that to yourself a thousand times a day. Remind yourself by saying it, and you'll be there eventually. Describe the system you will use to keep you accountable for using your action and power statements. So make a to-do list and revisit it each night. When you revisit your to-do list at the end of the night, you can look at what you did. You can look at what you didn't do. You can look at what you need to change tomorrow. I use my fitness pal. I think you do too, right? Yep. Yeah. I love my fitness pal because I, ha- I get to put 
fitness plans on there. And I always, every time I log in to, to do my breakfast, I'm like, it's not time for my fitness yet. So I hit later. And then when I go to log out my day out, it always says, Hey, you still have this one thing to complete. And I'm like, Oh man, <laughs> but revisiting your to-do list is really important. And if you do it every night and make it a habit, then it's too easy and it's going to help you get, move along. Step six, we're getting into committing yourself completely. So create a strategy that will keep your goal in the forefront of your mind every day. You can post a picture of someone else completing a 5k run, or you can buy that extra large t-shirt that you want to wear and hang it up somewhere. Try it on every once in a while. Name at least one person right now. Name this person who you can share your goal with, who can keep you motivated. Is it your spouse? Is it your kids? Rely on, rely on the people close to you. They do care about you because they're still in your life. Rely on those people. Tell them your goal. Explain what you're doing and go out there and obtain it. Also, you need to plan to sustain your commitment in the face of an expected obstacle. So just like we did before, you know, if you're not good at swimming, it's an obstacle. You need to plan to sustain your commitment. You have to be committed and you have to know that if you want to do the triathlon, you have to learn how to swim. You have to keep yourself motivated in that situation. Lastly, but not least, step seven, continually monitor your progress. Until you reach your goal, you'll need constant deliberate effort to ensure your progress. Describe how often you need to check on your progress. Every 30 days, every 20 days, every 60, 90, however big your goal is, it might get further out, the bigger your goal is. Set a reminder in your calendar on your phone, have it go off as an alarm. I need to go revisit my goal today. Go back, see where you are, see if you have to readjust and see if your goal is still plausible. Identify the date of your first check-in and that's what you also need to do now. We've already done all this other stuff. Right now, identify the day that you want to come back and check in. What's your day? Uh, Mondays. You check in every Monday? Yep. Okay. So if you don't want to check in as often as Luke does, you can check in just, what's today? 3rd of February. Check in on the 3rd of March. Write it down. If you can't figure out your own, I just gave you one. Brainstorm how you're going to leverage one of your values. If you don't know what all the values you have to choose from, go ahead and Google values. Google your character strengths. Look at your values. And then use one of those. Leverage one of your values when you face an unexpected obstacle. So for me, it is, I had mentioned before that one of my values is friends and family. So you utilize one of my family members that I'm telling. And how would they feel if I, if I just gave up in, in the face of an obstacle. They wouldn't be very happy with me. They would be sitting there right there cheering me on. Have you ever cheered somebody on and had them give up in front of you? Yeah, I've, I've done it myself a lot. It, it's, not a, it's not a good feeling. Use that if you have to. You can also find a different value to use to leverage as well. But setting a good example for my kids, right? That's a value. So if you want to set that example for your kids, Tell them your goal, tell them what's up, and play little games with them. They can come in and check on you for you. You don't even have to use a calendar. You have your kids. And that that's, I mean, broken down really fast. I kind of try to blow through it as much as I could without giving, you know, too much detail and in going into the projects that this covers. Um, that's this, the goal setting process. And, you know, like I said, step seven fits right back into step one and it continues and it goes and it grows and it, it creates a really amazing thing once you get going with it so i hope you're able to follow along i really appreciate all this and i i feel like i can benefit a lot from going back and redoing everything and i feel what you brought here today can help a lot of people i really hope it does i i really do it's helped me i've set quite a few goals using that process um and i i've really kind of honed my process with it so Anybody out there that's trying this for the first time, don't get discouraged if it doesn't work out the first time. Just get back to when you get to step seven, hit step one again, start over, tweak what didn't work last time and figure out what you have to do to make it work for you. Everybody's life is a little different. This is meant to fit into every life out there. All right. So I think that's where we're going to end it today, but I definitely plan on having you back and we can talk about so much more. I mean, as people are listening they know we can talk for days i do look forward to bringing you back and we can go into the resilience training even more at another time 
if you'd be down to come back on. Yeah, I would love to. And like I said before, we started out with it. There's 14 skills. I just went over one in minor detail. So we could talk for days on this. So I'm super excited. You've got me pumped up right now. I just got done with the gym, but I think I might be going back after this because I'm just so motivated right now after talking to you. That's great, man. I I do really appreciate you coming on here. You know, I, I love you. And uh, again, thanks for coming on, dude. I love you too, bud. I'll talk to you later. I really appreciate you taking some time to come and talk to me. I will definitely have you back because we have so much more that we can talk about. Let's go ahead and just jump right into my weigh-in. I did all right for the most part this week. There was one huge slip up and I plan on talking about it next week. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so surprisingly, I am down two pounds from last week. So I am 362. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, but I definitely uh, am not happy about that slip up I had. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, well, that is the show. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a review, leave me a comment, leave me a five-star rating. One thing that will help me the most is sharing the podcast. So if you know somebody that can benefit from what I'm talking about, shoot them the podcast or share it on your Facebook or Instagram, tag me, whatever. I would much appreciate it. Again, you can go to my website, lukeloses.card.co. That is C-A-R-R-D dot C-O. And I also have the phone number that you can call or shoot me a text message. I'm going to call it the loser line. So the loser line phone number is 323-920-5853. That is 323-920-LUKE. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you all so much for listening. Until next time, stay positive, trust the process, and do the work. I will see you next week.